These days in the news, there has been a lot of discussion about the Corona virus. Welcome to Jen's Jugio. My name is Jen. Today, for our English lesson, I wanted to break down some of the vocabulary that has been in the news over the last month so that hopefully when you hear English news connected to viruses and specifically the coronavirus, you'll be able to understand the news in English. A virus is a type of illness, sickness, kind of like a disease. When we're talking about the coronavirus specifically, there are actually several different kinds of coronaviruses. In the past, both SARS and MERS were examples of coronaviruses. This new coronavirus that started near the end of 2019 doesn't have a specific name yet, so it is often referred to as a novel coronavirus. Novel means new. And this is a very new virus that we still don't have all the information about. The outbreak of the coronavirus started at the end of 2019. So we use this, this word outbreak with things such as war or a virus spreading. And it means something is suddenly and negatively happening and affecting people. Okay. So the outbreak of this new coronavirus started at the end of last year. This new coronavirus, along with all coronaviruses, are zoonotic. Zoonotic means that the virus is able to be transmitted between humans and animals. Transmitted means spread between, right? So if I have the virus, I could give it to someone else. I can spread it to someone else. I will transmit the virus. As of making this video, over 20,000 people have been reported to have been infected with the virus. If you are infected with something, it's negatively saying that you are being affected with the virus. You have the virus. You have the sickness. It is inside of you. You are infected. So how do you know if someone has the coronavirus? Some symptoms of the virus include respiratory difficulties, a fever, and a dry cough. Respiratory means things that are connected to the breathing process, such as your lungs. So if you're having difficulty breathing, you're having respiratory issues. And I mentioned respiratory issues, a fever and a dry cough are symptoms of the virus. A symptom means a sign or some kind of medical problem that you are having, which can then help doctors to figure out what exactly is wrong with you. In order to know from these symptoms if you have the coronavirus or not, there is a test and then if the test comes back positive for the virus, you will be diagnosed with the virus. Diagnosed means that the doctors have all the information and test results and they're able to tell you, yes, this is what is wrong with you. Why are you having these symptoms? Because of this diagnosis. So the signs, why are these signs of the fever and breathing difficulty there? The reason is because of the virus, the symptoms and the diagnosis. Because this coronavirus is so new, there is not a vaccine available yet. A vaccine is a preventative measure that will help to protect your body against getting the virus. Vaccines are only effective for your body before you have the virus to help stop you from getting the virus. They are usually in the form of needles and contain medicine that is a little bit similar to the virus to help your body build up a defense against that virus. Although there is no vaccine for the coronavirus, there are other preventative measures that you can take. Preventative measures means things that you can do to try and stop 
the spread of the virus. How can you protect yourself against the virus? The number one thing that many countries and health officials are recommending is to use proper hygiene. Make sure you are washing your hands enough, especially before you eat or after going out. Or use alcohol-based hand sanitizers to help prevent the spread of the virus. Another preventative measure that many people take has been to wear masks to avoid breathing in tiny droplets. For example, if I have the coronavirus and I cough, <coughs> there's tiny, tiny bits of water that are in the air. You can't see them, but they are there. And someone else could breathe that in and they could also become infected. Which is why you can see many people wearing masks to try and stop themselves from breathing those tiny particles in and catching the virus. Right now in China, in order to help stop the transmission and the widespread of the coronavirus, different areas, especially the Hubei province where Wuhan city is, are in quarantine. So a quarantine is also an example of a preventative measure. A quarantine means that the people or sometimes animals who are infected with the virus are kept separated from other people. They are isolated from others to help avoid spreading the virus to other people. When I usually think of quarantine, I might think of a person or a couple people who are in a special area until they recover from whatever is happening. But the coronavirus is so widespread that the entire city of Wuhan is actually on complete lockdown, meaning that people are not really allowed to enter or leave the city. Wuhan city is the epicenter of the virus. So that means the main starting point and the point where things are concentrated at the moment. Currently, the new coronavirus is classified as an epidemic. An epidemic means the occurrence of a widespread illness happening in a particular community at a particular time. So right now, there are many cases throughout China, but specifically in Hubei province and specifically in Wuhan city is where the majority of people have been infected, where the majority of confirmed cases of this disease are happening. There have been over 20,000 reported cases just from mainland China. So although this disease, this virus has spread to over 25 other countries, it is not yet classified as a pandemic. Pandemic means that it has spread even more and rapidly across entire continents or across the entire globe. So it's an epidemic. It's not yet fully global. Even though there are reported cases in other countries, they're not spreading as rapidly. So currently, as of making this video, it is not considered to be a pandemic. It's only considered to be an epidemic. As of making this video, there are 427 confirmed deaths being reported from inside China and currently one death from the Philippines. So the expression that has been used in the news a lot is that the death toll is rising. So the expression death toll means the number of people that are dying connected to a specific exact cause or event. And we usually use the expression death toll when the number of people dying is probably going to increase as more statistics are made available. You might also hear the expression that there have been over 400 fatalities reported as a result of the coronavirus. Fatality means somebody who has passed away as a result of, in this case, the virus. So fatality also means a person who has died. There are many cases of people from other countries who 
are in Wuhan or in other parts of China and they want to leave the quarantine. They want to leave the situation because they feel that it is very dangerous for them. But because of the quarantine, they are not technically able to travel or to leave. So as a result, several governments have been evacuating their citizens from China. To evacuate someone means to remove them from a dangerous situation. It's not used just for viruses. If there is an earthquake or a fire, people will evacuate the building that they are in. They will leave the building because the fire or the earthquake might be causing a dangerous situation for them. So in this case, there are many people inside China and in Hubei province who want to leave the quarantine and return to their home countries. They want to, their governments to help support them in evacuating from the situation. Canada is currently working with the Chinese government to try and evacuate not just its citizens, but also some of its permanent residents. Several other governments have already evacuated their citizens to their home countries. So in this case, we could also use the word to repatriate their citizens. To repatriate someone means to return them back to their home country. The incubation period of the coronavirus is supposedly 14 days. So incubation period means the amount of time from when the virus enters your body to the time that you will actually start to show symptoms of the virus. When the virus has been transmitted to you, it doesn't mean that automatically, right away, you will start to have a fever and you will start to have trouble breathing. It can actually take up to two weeks for those symptoms to start to become visible. There can be cases of people being carriers of the virus. They have the virus, but they don't know they have the virus because they don't have any symptoms because of the 14 day incubation period. So as an extra preventative measure to try and stop this virus from becoming a pandemic rather than just an epidemic, if people are being evacuated from the quarantined zone and repatriated to their own countries, they have to stay isolated and in another quarantine in that country for 14 days just to be safe, just to make sure that they're not going to transmit the virus to other people. So this has been some useful vocabulary words that I have heard a lot in the news lately connected to the topic of the coronavirus. I'm hoping that this vocabulary will help you to more clearly understand the English news that is available on this topic. One thing to be aware of is that there is a lot of fake news and rumors and things like that spreading online about the situation with the coronavirus. So for the most accurate information, I recommend that you check the WHO's website. WHO means the World Health Organization. Usually I end my lessons with a question of the day as an opportunity for people to practice writing comments about what they've learned in the lesson. So I want to give you this opportunity if you have any questions about this topic or polite comments you would like to make on this topic, feel free to do so in the comments below. Thank you so much for watching this video. I sincerely hope that it has been helpful for you. If it was useful, please consider subscribing to Jen's Jugio so you don't miss any English lessons. And give this video a thumbs up. Good luck with your English studies, everyone. Stay healthy and I'll see you in the next lesson.